Howdy friends, my name is Wesley, I work on band instruments. This is my shop. Thanks for dropping by today. Let's see what we're working on. The original plan for today was to restore this Bach trumpet, repair the bell, get all the slides pulled, fix the dents, all of this. The valves do not move. And although I have put a lot of penetrating oil on them, I can't get them to move. So I'm going to have to make a tool to get these out. So this is going to get put on hold for the day. So we're going to pivot and work on this cool old busher. This is a really nice horn in really good shape. So let's take a Let's take a tour around and see what we got to do to this. So, right off the bat, needs a neck cork. This is slick. We'll do something about all that. Bell keys don't want to close exactly the way they should, so we need to take care of that. Funk on the E flat key. The C key is opening too far and we can hear it clacking. Customer complains that this note plays flat. We know why. Right hand section, not too bad. Looks like we got some leaks in the left hand section. Let's go put a light down it and see what we got. I'm going to drop the light down it. You can see that the F and the E are nice. This D key is definitely leaking here. Positioning here, we can see that the this bis B flat is wanting to leak a little bit not closing this top key here and this C key here is not wanting to go there's too much balance here something's catching down here so just some regular adjustment stuff here let's check these bell keys we could visually without a light see that they were off oh yes okay that's what we got going on today So what you want to do here is take some rough sandpaper and rough this section where the glue is going to be. Uh, gives the glue something to adhere to so you get better stiction. This is the relation that the E key has as it closes. This is the D key. Notice that it's hitting there before the pad even makes contact. And then the back of the pad hits first. So we'll have to take care of that. You'll notice that I use different shapes of leather at different thicknesses so that I can make the keys re-parallel. Some you, sometimes you have to tilt, this is the front and this is the back. Sometimes they're tilted down and you have to make them like this. And sometimes if it's hitting in the back first, and the pad cup itself needs to hit as a parallel as it comes down. And even if the player, this player has admittedly he plays with a heavy action or a heavy grip. My goal is always, always, always fingertips. As light as I can possibly play. And I don't, when I push it down with just my fingertips, nothing bounces. It's still a very solid boom. It's there.
that's what we're going for. These are these are metal, steel, something like that. We do use these in occasions, some drastic cases, but by and large, I use leather. Uh, I find that it doesn't mess up the tone holes as much, and I can still get exactly what I want, and that's a positive feel. All right, got that fixed. Let's move on to the C key down here. They make these bumper felts not only in the different colors, but in the different thicknesses as well. With no felt in place, this key opens up so far, the player complains that it's flat. With this style of felt in, it looks like this is too closed, based on my experience. And that's going to play stuffy and sharp. This is that white felt that we selected. And you'll see that it has about the same opening and clearance that the keys up here did as well. I believe that the horn is going to respond right and play in tune here. So the changes I just made there, the C sharp was not sitting in the middle of the tone hole. The pad was not sitting in square, so it was leaking. Also it had no, even though it was an older new pad, it had no seat in it. So now it's got a seat, it immediately took, sets down beautifully the way it needs to. One thing that I see a lot, and I've seen it over the years, would you say that the spring is engaged or disengaged? Would you believe me if I told you I unhooked the spring on this? That's the relationship to the B. That's the B flat. Notice we've got some work to do on that B flat. Why did I unhook the spring? The reason that I unhooked the spring, you can see it uh, dangling right there. People use spring tension to overcome bad padding. So if they don't do a good job in their pad work, they just make it where you have to squeeze the horn harder. When you squeeze the horn harder and white knuckle it, then the pad will close. With a proper light spring touch, the player can lighten up with the key that is parallel to the tone hole on a round tone hole. The lightest spring touch is what's needed. Okay, I'm off my soapbox. Let's get this key taken care of. Now here we have our bell keys, that's the B. I did rehook the spring. Notice that it's now just as light as when I had it unhooked. And here's the B flat. B flat together. Both of these on their own just really pop now. This is just the lower section, right? We've worked from here to the bell. When the keys lay, they just pop. You 
can listen to the horn. You can listen to the horn tell you that you're doing the right job. Now let's take care of this upper stack. Okay, so let's check this upper stack. Oh yeah, you remember what we had before. This looks great all over. And notice just these keys. Already playing us a song. Now I did notice, I did notice here on this key. Ever so slight. See that? This key, when the horn warms up, this key swells. And ever so slight that it lifts off. So we're gonna replace this pad. See how it hits in the back? And then comes the front. When this when this when the horn swells, that's going to open up. So we're gonna replace this pad. Then this pad is pretty trashy. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this. That's the F, the palm F. And remember that we have to take care of that E flat as well. So I'm gonna do that. This is the pad that was in the high E key. Uh, we probably could have saved it, but it just doesn't look very good. This is our E flat. You know why it's called the sewer key. And then this is the palm F. Um, the other thing that I found when I took this rod out is look how rusty and built up this is. So we're gonna polish this rod down. This is the rod for that E-flat C key after we polished it. I want it to feel nice and smooth and be round. In theory, you want your mouthpiece to be tight as soon as it touches, and you want to have it feel consistent all the way down. So if you can, the closer you can get that before you do anything else, the better off you're gonna be, the better your job is gonna be. From here with my neck cork, I'm gonna take some paraffin, And then I'm gonna take fire. And I'm gonna melt in the paraffin. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna seal 
the glue on the underside. So now we've roughed up the brass, the raw brass that's underneath. We've roughed that up to give the glue something better to stick to. We've put our cork on, and now we've sealed the cork with paraffin. And now this glides on even smoother. When we unwrap, we have a beautiful clean line. And a beautiful neck cork. And you'll always know it's my work because the seam is on the bottom. So you can hear how oiling the mechanism took all that rattly and jankiness out. So now all you hear is the pop of the horn. Man. All right. So we already know this horn's going to play, so I don't even really have to embarrass myself, but I will. Thanks for stopping by the shop today. Man, that's a cool old Busher saxophone. That's really, really nice. I want to tell you about a couple of things that I didn't address in the video, techniques and different things that I used. I use amber shellac. I've gotten away from using the hot glues that have become very popular. I've gone back very traditional in my glues. I'm using amber shellac. You saw me paint this on. This is flake shellac melted in denatured alcohol. When I know that I've got the relationship of the pad cup parallel to the tone hole, um, I'll almost always use this if I don't have to float the pad in any kind of way. When I was doing the palm F key, when I took the key off, you notice that I dressed the tone hole. This is a rubber plug. I have some 1200 grit sandpaper that I just contacted to cement it to either side. I use it to dress tone holes. It doesn't scratch, but it takes any kind of green or any of that stuff, it takes it off of. Very inexpensive tool to have and to use. So that's some of the tips and tricks that I use on fixing this saxophone. Always making sure that the relationship between the pad cup and the pad and the tone hole are parallel. Very light finger touch. Don't let the springs fool you into having a heavier grip. Even if the player plays with a heavy grip, go ahead and make it just silky smooth. All right, I figured out a fix for that Bach trumpet. So I've got to get to work with my steel here and make a tool. I'll see you next time. Come back by for another visit.